True confessions time, I really don't like miters. To me, it's usually a four letter word in my shop, frankly, and there's a couple of reasons for it. First is being able to set up whatever tool I'm using to cut accurate miters that result in a perfect 90 degree angle and that close tightly. The second thing is, is once you go to glue up that miter joint, there's really no good way to clamp it up because the joint faces are at 45 degrees to any of your reference edges. So as soon as you start putting glue on and clamps, things start sliding around all over the place. Now, the solution to that are, you know, commercially made oddball miter clamps and things like that. But I wanna show you about a shop made solution that could change my mind about using miters more often in my projects. And it's this miter vise. It's actually modeled after an old Stanley version. It, those were made out of cast iron. You can find vintage ones around in different places, but making one yourself pays a lot of big dividends. The main one being in the thriftiness section that you could probably build this from a lot of scrap that you have laying around and just a handful of hardware. So it's pretty wallet friendly. Let's talk a little bit about its capabilities and then we'll get into the construction of it a little bit. So the first thing is that you have this reference plate on top that serves to hold the work pieces. There's a couple of things going on here. First is a block that serves as the back part of the jaw of the vise. These have little pieces of sandpaper on them so that it provides a non-slip surface for the work pieces once you slide them in place. But this jaw is movable. If I pull out this knob and flip it over, you can see there's a channel that runs in the base part here and a key that slides in it. That way, with these threaded inserts installed in the top, you can position this block basically anywhere along this length to match the width of the pieces that you're working with. You know, so I have some uh, mitered frame pieces here that, you know, let's call it little over two inches. So I can just find the whole set that's gonna work for me, line it up, and lock it down. The other end of the clamping are these uh, spring-loaded clamping jaws, let's call them. Uh, they're controlled by knobs and threaded rod and some springs here. And then there are these adjustable uh, vice faces or jaws on here. So how this works is that I can put my piece in place on the vise and I can lower this so that this little bump on the jaw can serve two purposes. Most of the time what I like to do is to set it so that it kind of registers right at the top of the workpiece. So when I lock that down, now when I clamp this piece in, the top of that bump is pulling the piece down so I know that it's gonna stay nice and flat on the, the reference face of the jig, okay? So what you can also do, so when I put the other piece in now, so I have one piece held, it's all secure, ready to go. I can bring the other piece in and just snug it up a little bit. So now I can start to fine tune the position of these two pieces where they need to meet without having to worry about dropping pieces on the floor. And I can bring them in, apply clamping pressure until they're nice and snug. All right, so there you have it. I have my two pieces locked together. And when I'm ready to add glue, there's a couple other features here to notice. One is that the inside corner of this top block has been lopped off, kind of dog-eared there. Once glue gets on and it squeezes out onto that inside part, there's some place for that glue to go so you're not gluing your frame to the vise and it's also not smearing the glue all around. Um, if I take these out here real quick, that channel where the top block slides in, that's recess, that's a dado that goes through there. Again, when you apply glue and squeeze that together, any squeeze out can drip right in there and isn't gonna smear around on the bottom face of your frame.
Now, a lot of times, uh, you know, that works really well for just straight up mitered frames that you need to do or mitered moldings. But if you're working with like picture frames or a mitered door frame, a lot of times that's gonna have a rabbit on the back face to accept a panel or paint a glass or artwork or whatever. Now you can also use this jig for that as well in that you can register that rabbit on the jig face on that adjustable block. And when I clamp that down now, I'm registering off of that that raises up the frame to give you an accurate reference. There we go. So I got a nice tight miter joint. Now another thing that I like about this vise, and this is something that we learned from picture framers, is that uh, we're leaving the corner, the end of the corner here exposed on the joint, and that's for a good reason. I can come in now with a brad nailer reinforce the joint with nails, pow, pow, each side. And now I can have this pulled out and I can work on the next corner or another assembly. Now, if you're working with really long pieces or sometimes you just need to get a little better access to it, this miter vise has a second operating position in that I can flip it horizontally and clamp it to the bench top. And here again, now I can bring my pieces up into place. I can see the end of the joint and the face of the joint to take care of all the operations. And again, I have that opportunity to reinforce that joint by adding some brad nails to the open part of the vise. Now let's talk a little bit about how it's built because for all that it can do, it's really pretty uncomplicated in its construction. So what we have here is a, a plywood base, and then there's a core that's glued up from hardwood. Though you could actually use plywood here and you know use up some of the pieces that you've kind of squirreled away. You glue it up, and then you drill a hole for a cross dowel in each of the two faces. So there's one there and then one on that side. That cross dowel is threaded to accept a, a long clamping uh, knob. You can use that, uh, glue that in with some epoxy if you can't find ones that are long enough. There's another cross dowel you notice in the front movable jaw of the vise. These are just shaped a little bit so that you have a little smaller area on here to use shorter knobs for the adjustable jaws on top. Now the key part here is this top part of the jig. We want to make uh, this top part and the dado that goes through the middle here to be at 90 degrees to our reference faces. So this is where you're going to need to take some time in setting up your table saw to cut that. You'll do the same thing for the fixed jaw on the vise in that you want that you want this runner to be 45 degrees perfectly to these faces. So you can take your time here, adjust it, uh, fine tune the faces with you know, a disc sander or hand plane or whatever. Um, again, you wanna put in the threaded inserts. It's top plate is attached to this core piece with long wood screws and some glue. Again, that gives you another opportunity to kind of get everything right into position before you finally attach it. Uh, we used a little bit of finish on here just to protect the surfaces and help it resist glue. These arms are attached to the base with just regular small butt hinges. So the hardware here is not complicated. You can find a lot of it at just your regular hardware store. Heck, you might even have it in the coffee can on the shelf in your shop already. So if you are ready to transform the way you work with miters, uh, maybe check out making your own shop-made miter vise. Uh, you can kind of get the concept from here, or if you're looking for specific instructions, check out the plans at woodsmithplans.com. Bye.